First, let's pay homage to the lineage gurus, homage to the venerable Mang Liao Ming, homage to Master Sakya Zhengkong, homage to the 16th Karmapa, His Holiness, and to Master Dupten Dorji. Homage to the three jewels of the altar and homage to the main deity of Homa today, Mahapratisara Bodhisattva, the wish granting Vajra. Sumo, Tutan Siti Rinpoche, all Dharma masters, Dharma educators, Dharma teachers, Dharma assistants, temple directors all disciples present here and over the internet. And our participating VIPs today are from the Taiwan government, the Chief Secretary, Mr. Zheng Peifu and Mrs. Zheng. And the Tribute School Scholars Group and Medical group and the general manager of the Jing Yi Enterprise, Ms. Zhang Yizhen. And from Indonesia, the petroleum company, Mr. Lin Hassan. And the ex classmate of His Holiness, Mr. Zhu Jingsui and Mrs. Zhu. And the rep to the Council of Tainan City. And the president of the Worldwide Lotus Light Charity Society, Master Chang Ren. And the director of the Taiwan Lotus Light Charity Society, Mr. Li Chun Yang. And producers for the Gemi Gen Sang Xin Teng, Dharma Sister Rebecca Xia Qi. And producers for the Great Perfection Dharma Hevaja Exposition and Deva Mr. Jitavatan Tayana, Master Lian Yu. And the host to Lam De and the Sutra of Perfect Enlightenment, Master Lian He, Master Lian Jia, and Master Lian Hai. Miss Lu Sung Mei, my sister. And gratitude to Mas, uh, Fa Luo chapter in Taiwan, Master Lian Ying, Su Luo Sa Kuan. And for 30 people, they have donated 215,000 NT dollars. And that my brother Ma Zhen Hao for his donation of $100,000. Good afternoon. How do you do? Today, we practiced Maha Pratisara Bodhisattva. And this deity, generally speaking, is quite well known for tantric practitioners. For Chinese Tantrayana, he is very famous. However, uh, 
Only few people are very familiar with him. And his virtue and merits are truly tremendous. If you were the primary supplicants or registrants for this deity, primarily this deity is for wish granting or wish fulfilling. So you would be granted whatever wishes you have. So you would receive responses. And he's a bodhisattva. So not like the temple, the responsive temple. That's uh, because of the ghosts and spirits. However, this deity is a bodhisattva. So his Vajra name is Wish Granting Vajra. So the great wish fulfilling Bodhisattva or Mahapratisara. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes in my chanting of his mantra, <laughs> it's like Mahaprada, like Prada is a brand name. Actually, it's not Prada, but it's Prati. Maha means great. Mahaprati Sara. Sato also means Bodhisattva. Om Mahaprati Sato Soha. And some, pa some people may make a mistake and recite it as Mahaprata, which is a well-known brand name. So this deity is Mahaprati Sato Soha. The mantra is bright, and this Bodhisattva is very uh, colorful and attractive and he's from the Kuan Yin court and he's considered as a Kuan Yin Bodhisattva and his special Vajra name is the wish granting Vajra and this is the mudra the wish granting mudra And there is something very special about the wish granting Vajra is that whatever you wish for will be fulfilled. So he has such special ability and he has a tremendous high Dharma power the same as Kuan Yin Bodhisattva from the Kuan Yin court. And Mahapratisara is wearing a jeweled crown and in a fearless form with eight arms and his body is dark yellow and the top right hand is holding a lotus blossom and on top of the lotus there's a flaming golden wheel and then the next hands are holding scriptures banner and lasso and the top right hand was holding a five prong vajra scepter and the next hands are holding a halberd sword and kartika 
and he is seated on a lotus. So he has eight arms holding different things. So Mahapratisara is a transformation of Kuan Yin Bodhisattva Lokaswara. And the Vajra name is the wish granting Vajra. So this deity is the Vajra that can fulfill your wishes. So the primary supplicants today will have your wishes be fulfilled today. The first special characteristic is he would emit the brightest, brilliant light. So whether in Mahayana or Vajrayana, Mahapratisara is a very extraordinary and outstanding bodhisattva. So Mahapratisara bodhisattva and Amuga Bhasa bodhisattvas will fulfill whatever wishes you have. So primary supplicants for this deity were truly fortunate. Whatever you prayed for, you would fulfill your wishes. You would have your wishes fulfilled. And he has a sutra. Is the Mahapratisara Dharani Sutra of Universal Illumination Supreme Wish Fulfilling Mudra? So there are three sutras. So it was recorded in the sutra. So when there is, where it is in the sutra, it's spoken by the Buddha. So it's not fabricated by people. So this Bodhisattva was spoken by the Buddha. So it's the wish fulfilling great self mastery dharani there are lots of responses so if you heard it or if you copy the sutra or and the mantra or recite them, or write them, copy them, then you would receive that you will not be touched by burning fire. You will never be poisoned. Recently, I read a poem that's called hmm? It's a kind of wine. Oh, that if you take this wine, then you would lose consciousness and you would lose your body. But if you recite Mahapratisara Mantra, then you will not be affected by the poison, so you will not lose your um, purity. So you can subjugate your enemies. And you can be able to break from the 
unbreakable hell so you can escape from this hell so but please don't chant it wrong please don't say Mahaprada Prada it should be Mahaprati please don't recite it wrongly because if you say Prada then you will not be able to escape even if there is a one discrepancy it's not it will not work so you would be able to break away from the hell and you will not be harmed by dragons but in India actually it referred to snakes in ancient India it was called Naga Naga is actually a snake so disasters due to snakes and fish like sharks in the ocean if the sharks hurt you man recite the mantra Om Maha Prati Salu Soha then the shark would join <laughs> palms and bow to you maybe because the sharks didn't like uh, your smell and av avoided you and you would have peace and happiness that's really good oh so it to have a good childbirth like when you're about to have childbirth and you reset this mantra you will not suffer from pain and you would have uh, peace and safety in childbirth and would also be freed from all uh, disputes and lawsuits you can recite this mantra and then you pray to Mahapratisara Bodhisattva if you have any uh, lawsuits or some kind of uh, misfortunes then the big misfortune would become a small misfortune and the small misfortune would become nothing because perhaps the judge upon seeing you would feel the light above your head then it must be a good person maybe he's being misjudged and then you're freed sometimes the judgments in your hearts are two extremes you know because there are cases where we find that it should be prosecuted it should be uh, execution and then it turned out just to be a life sentence like recently someone that was supposed to receive uh, life execution a woman who killed a elderly couple Xie Yihan. when I saw her on TV wearing eyeglasses and she was young and pretty uh, like a good person and when the judge saw her an elderly couple died in Hong Sulin in Tan Sui at the Mama Cafe right <laughs> at the place called Mama Tsui but the name of the cafe shop is Mama Tsui. It's like mom's 
lips of mo mom's mouth, coffee shop, and Xie Yihan, the murderer. I saw her on TV, and she looked uh, kind of and I feel sympathy toward her. <laughs> she looked delicate and pretty. So it's kind of weird. Why did she want to kill that elderly couple? Maybe it must be because of money. So she was uh, prosecuted uh, to a life sentence. Who knows, maybe she recited this mantra secretly. Oh ma brati salo soha. And she recited it every day, day by day. So when the judge saw her, maybe the judge felt that it's Maybe she shouldn't be sentenced to death. Instead, she was a sentenced to a life sentence. So you can gain lots of merit. And the sutra is very long. The name of the sutra is so long. <laughs> oh my gosh, the name of the sutra is very long. The Mahapratisara Dharani Sutra of Universal Illumination, Supreme Wish Fulfilling Mudra, Unconquered. Gurbal Vidya Raja. And the key point is here. He has eight of his mudras, and you need to learn them all. One is the inner five prong mudra, Kala Chakra mudra, Yamantaka mudra, Ushina Vijaya mudra, the three prong mudra, single prong mudra, Akasagarbha mudra, and the scripture mudra. So there are eight mudras that you need to form in order to make your wish. So, in order to make you wish, you need to form this eight mudras. So, let me form them to show. Let me. The inner five. Mudra. That's the inner five prong mudra and Kala Chakra mudra. Yamantaka Mudra. Ushina Vijaya Mudra.
three prong mudra single prong mudra Akasagava Mudra Scripture Mudra <laughs> Not Tomato Mudra So all together, eight mudras. And most importantly, you need to clap three times and rub three times. And rub three times. After you form these eight mudras, you pray to him. And because you rub three times, then you have touched the heart of Mahapratisara Bodhisattva. And the eight mudras represent his eight hands. And when you form the scripture mudra, and when you clap three times and rub three times, you touch the heart of the Bodhisattva. And immediately, the Bodhisattva would look on you, and then he would be able to hear whatever you pray for. So this is the key formula. So rub three times and clap three times. Right? So clap three times and rub three times. And this is the key formula. At this time, doesn't matter where Mahapratisara is, by reciting his mantra and form the Mahapratisara eight mudras, and then clap the mudra and rub three times, then he would hear you and look down on you that this person is praying to him. Uh, even an ordinary person, if he formed the eight mudras and has formed the scripture mudra and rubbed three times, then the person must have received instruction from an excellent master. So even when uh, they would, uh, because of the master, that you would receive uh, the grant of your prayer. So the most important uh, fifth instruction is to form the eight mudras and also do the secret and also to reset the mantra and then your wishes will be granted. So that's about uh, Mahapratisara Bodhisattva. Now we will talk about Lamde. So the Lamde Vajra verses 
已经有上师在给他解释，由上师来解释。呃、uh, ，exposition。So because of Ajavis's very terse, that's why now with the exposition means it's already explained by gurus. So bowing at the lotus beneath the feet of the virtuous guru. So prior to any Dharma teaching, we will pay homage to the lineage guru. Like grandmaster, prior to Dharma teaching, I will always uh, bow, pay homage to my lineage root guru. In India, there was a tradition to the person that you highly respect or to your own gurus, you would use your head to touch the feet of the lineage guru to show respect. So you use your head to touch the feet of the guru. That means that you are bowing uh, to the feet of the gurus. So that's the tradition in India. Also, during Sakyamuni Buddha's time, when the disciples is visiting him, then the disciples would use their heads to touch the feet of Sakyamuni Buddha. That's the highest uh, homage. The Tathagatas at the greatest kings and the Vajradhara, the secret master of no discernments, and the four bodies with self-masteries, the self-nature transforming into the five bodies, and homage to the lotus of the gurus with the highest attainments. So this is praising. The highest praise is to the lineage gurus. And the most supreme kings of the Tathagatas. So the guru is the body of the Tathagata and is the supreme king. That you are in, inseparable from the Vajradhara and also the master of the secrets. So the Buddhas have five bodies, four bodies, three bodies, five bodies, and they are all praises. So if you have five bodies, the same as the Buddha, and then you pay homage to the lotus beneath the gurus with the highest attainments or realizations because he regarded the lineage root guru as having the highest attainments. So the feet of the guru is the same as lotus blossoms. That's the first four lines. So typically speaking, lineage root guru is not different from the Buddhas, from the Tathagatas. So this is to praise one's own lineage and lineage root gurus. All of Tantrayana's disciples would know that their own lineage root guru is very supreme and endowed with all virtues and merits. Supreme is unexcelled. There is no one better than the lineage root guru. So no one 
pay homage to Virupa. You first, you first homage to uh, your own lineage to Guru, and then you homage to Virupa. Look at Grandmaster prior to giving Dharma teaching, would first pay homage to our my own lineage with gurus. Every time before Dharma teaching, every time Grandmaster Lu is giving a Dharma talk, whether at the Taiwan Temple or chapters. Any time you ask me to give a Dharma teachings, I never speak right away. I will first pay homage to my own lineage with gurus, to Venerable Mang Liao Ming, to Master Sakya Zengkong, to His Holiness the Sixteen Karmapa, and to Master Dutam Tarji. I will always pay homage first, prior to Dharma teaching. But anyone who give a Dharma teaching without paying homage to the lineage root gurus first, then that's your own talk. It's not due, it's not the Dharma teachings from the lineage. So at the beginning of Lam Day, you need to pay homage to your own lineage root gurus first. And he is no different from all the real bodies of the Tathagatas. And he is the Vajra holder and the master of all the secrets. The Vajradhara or the Adi Adharma Buddha, the secret of Vajra holder is Samantha Vajra Tathagata or Adi Dharma Buddha, and then the second is the five Dhyani Buddhas, the second Vajradhara, and then Vajra Sattva. So Vajradhara, five Vajradharas, so Vajrasattva is the seventh Vajradhara. And all of our Dharma studies come from our Lineage Root Guru. So our Lineage Root Guru is the eighth Vajradhara. And then you become the ninth Vajradhara. So that's the lineage. So Dharma is like this. If you want to become the heart son of a Dharma king, if you are my heart son, you are my son, but where is your origin? Your wisdom life comes from the lineage root guru. My life comes from my parents, and you need to respect them all. Your life comes from your father and mother, but your wisdom life comes from where? From your lineage root guru. In this world, there's no one that would reprimand his or her own parents. You need to be respectful toward them because that's where you get your life. And your wisdom lives. Without your gurus, they will not be you. That's your wisdom life. So the origin of your wisdom comes from your lineage root gurus. That's about your wisdom life. 
So you cannot criticize or defame or slander your own root gurus. And then if you take refuge in the wrong gurus, what would you do? And if you feel that that's the wrong guru, according to the Tantrayana, that you can leave that guru, but you cannot reprimand that guru. Please. Do you remember Master Lianjie Alan Ho from California? The Wei Guang Lijang Temple, Master Al Alan, Alan Ho. When he was about to leave, I told him, you need to find a guru. And he did find a guru. And the guru asked him, why did you leave your own lineage guru? And he replied, because my guru reprimanded me. And that guru said, that was right, that the guru reprimanded you. And that's what I heard. I heard that he uh, paid homage to another guru, and the guru asked, why did you leave your lineage root guru? And because he reprimanded you. You know, if the guru doesn't value you, then the guru will not reprimand you. The, the fact that the guru reprimands you is because the guru cares for you. It's for your own good. It's, uh, it's for your own good, for to relieve you from your own uh, transgressions. Otherwise, if the guru doesn't care about you, whatever, you know, you do whatever you want. It's even if you leave, you don't feel anything. But if it's painful or <laughs> but you know if you have feeling about it then you would reprimand him or her otherwise you just let them go so there are many people took away the spiritual centers the chapters the temples they left They walked away, and I never recommended them. Just do whatever you want. That means we have no affinities. So lineage root guru is the origin of your wisdom life. And the rest, I don't care. And if they left, they walked away, they didn't leave any marks. Only those who I value that I would reprimand because I value you because I love you, I care for you. Because I care about you. Te quiero mucho, because I regard you highly. Sarangi, that's Korean, Spanish, because I care for you, I love you. Because I want, because I want you to be liberated because I want to save your wisdom lives. And you don't even realize it. Then you cannot be saved. 
And then, what should we do? Then, we'll just let it be. So, lineage with Guru is the source of our wisdom life. Please remember. He asked me, you've been married for 40 years, and you're still holding hands, walking on the roads. It's really enviable. And B said, because if I let her hand go, then she would go shopping. <laughs> Holding your hand. Do you know? Holding your hand is because I want to save you. Otherwise, you would fall into the, uh, the Vajra hell or the deepest hell. And Mr. Wong asked the, the, the serviceman, uh, weren't, you going <laughs> weren't you going to fix our doorbells? How come you didn't come? And the serviceman said, well, I rang the doorbells three times and nobody responded, so I left. Well, because it was broken, that's why I asked you to fix it. So there's cause and effect in here. So when the doorbell breaks, you ask uh, someone to fix it, but the servicemen still ring the doorbell. Uh, the dad asked the sister-in-law for fifty dollars, and the sister-in-law and the daughter-in-law didn't give it. And then he asked he asked the son for a hundred dollars. You need to ask for your wife. And what uh, what a shameful thing, you know, I'll give it to you at night. Why? Why don't you give it now? Well, because I need to ask for you from your mom. So that's a lineage. So in our Dharma studies, we need to have lineage. The mudras that you form, you learn from Grandmaster. Like Mahapratisara's eight mudras, you need to learn from Grandmaster. Actually, the mudras are not called this way, like Yamantaka Mudra, Aushinavijaya Mudra. They have their own names. And because I want you to remember them clearly, that's why I would call it Yamantaka Mudra, or Kalachakra Mudra, or Akasagarbha Mudra. So that's why I named them this way, because this way you would remember them easily, because you have learned all those other dharma. So that's for convenience. Actually, the Mahapratisara eight mudras have their own names for each of the mudras. However, because these eight mudras, by coincidence, uh, are the same as those of Kalachakra, Yamantaka, Ushinawijaya, Akasagarbha, the mudras are exactly the same. So I use the known names to name the mudras so that you would leave a stronger impression on you and easier to remember. So if I name them different names, like real mudra or whatever, you may not be able to remember them 
quickly. But if I call them these names, then you would remember them easily. So that's the skillful means of the lineage guru. A classmate just got married, and his wife was the uh, older sister of the twins. And they look very alike. And when we went drinking, I asked him, how can you differentiate between your wife and her younger sister? And after he drank a glass of beer and wiped the foam, he laughed and said, why do I need to uh, distinguish them clearly. So I was just talking about the mudras before. Don't differentiate them. If this was the wheel mudra or the kartika mudra, you should just remember one mudra because one mudra is the same as two mudras. This is what I just said. Skillful means. You need to master that in order to remember them. The master is a little bit older, so sometimes I would forget, like when I was in Seattle, someone, a lady called Xian Li, Xi Chun. Her name is Tang Xi Chun. And the other one called Xian Li, and I call her Xian Xian. And these two girls went to Seattle together with uh, Rui Rong, La Ye. <laughs> and I never <laughs> been able to differentiate them. And I would call Tang Tang Xian Xian and call Xian Xian Tang Tang. So I would make a mistake, Tang Tang or Xian Xian. It took me a long time before I remembered them, but I remember Rei Rong, because I often see her. But they went to Seattle for the first time. One is called Xian Li, and the other one is called Tang Xi Chun. What is the family name of Xian Li? Ah, oh, you're also old. <laughs> so please don't blame me if I call you wrongly. Sometimes I'm forgetful. Sometimes I forget that I have eaten it. Uh, did I take the supplement? I would ask <laughs> Sumo, <laughs> did you see Did you see me taking the supplement? And she said, oh, I saw you walking by the fridge, and I thought maybe I have taken it. And then I stood up again to the fridge, and then I walked back again, and I didn't know. And I forgot what I was, pers uh, was, what I was doing. And she said that she saw me walk by the fridge. Maybe I have taken the supplement. So I didn't take it again. <laughs> Vitamins, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, X. <laughs> Whatever people give me, I would take. 
If I take it and I don't feel anything bad, I'll take them all. So sometimes I forget. My memory is not that good. It's unavoidable sometimes. When you're older, that happens. Like, uh, have I made the offering? Before meals, every time I would make the offering. <laughs> I make another offering again. And then you would say, Good Master, you have made the offering. Then she knew. I often ask her, Have you made, have I made the offering? And she, she said, Yes, you have. But I f felt like, uh, Heaven. So I did it again because I was afraid that I would miss it. And also in uh, teaching the sutras, I would say something wrong or I would uh, write the wrong letter sometimes in my writing. An order said in writing the book, like there would be one mistaken word after 600 words, or like one in 600 words. Sometimes I would say people's name wrong, like the Dignaga uh, Actually, actually, altered the Yang Lun. I don't remember either. And sometimes there would be mystics as well. So all the Tathagatas, the Supreme Kings, and the Master of the Secrets, Vajradhara, is inseparable from the Vajradhara, and transform into the five bodies, and the five bodies the same as the Buddha. And we pay homage to the lotus feet of the Guru, with the highest uh, realization. Hmm? So when you pay homage, there are seven parts that touch the grounds. Two feet, two knees, two hands, and one head. So homage involves seven parts of your bodies touching the ground. That's how you need to pay homage. So homage to the lotus feet of the guru with the highest realization. Uh, at the class, the guru asks the class, uh, Ye Fei, how Ye Fei died? He's the first who died from f exhaustion. Why? Oh, because Ye Fei was killed by Qin Kuai, and Qin Kuai in Chinese also means uh, effort and diligence. So that's why Xiaoming said that Ye Fei died of exhaustion. Qin Kuai. It's uh, another name, but also means uh, work hard, hard work. I remember there was a joke. A manager was interviewing a laborer, what can you do and what can you not do? And he said, only two things I cannot do. Oh, that's pretty good. 
so he must be working hard. But he's very lazy and he, he just cannot do anything. So the boss asks him again, and you said you only, you, there are only two things that you cannot do. But how come there you cannot do anything? And he replied, well, because I cannot do this and I cannot do that. He cannot do both. And he said there are only two. So in our Buddhist studies, the gurus use skillful means and the disciples can accept it during the Dharma teaching. So when the guru use skillful means in his Dharma teaching, the disciples can accept it and absorb it easily. And as I continue my Dharma teaching, I hope that you can understand the, the important meaning of the Dharma. Oh, money, baby, home.